the next one is going to be Abiola David, uh, who's going to be presenting in a second. Now, just before I actually play the video, let me just tell you a little bit about Abiola. He is another um, uh, expert here. He's a Microsoft Excel, Power BI and SQL Server and Tableau consultant. He's also a speaker, author and blogger. A Microsoft Excel MVP, Abiola is the founder of Excel Jet Consult, a leading data analyst training firm located in Lagos, Nigeria, which I've been lucky enough to go to. Quite a long bridge to get to Lagos from the airport, as I recall. Um, he's trained professionals both in the public and private sector in Nigeria, and he loves to share his knowledge via blog posts, YouTube videos, answering questions on Microsoft Tech Community and other programs. So sit back and relax for the next 36 minutes and 28 seconds as what he's actually going to be doing now is our third session our 11 o'clock one building data warehouse lake house and sql endpoint in microsoft fabric hello everyone my name is abiola david i'm a microsoft excel power bi and sql trainer and a consultant and of course i'm a microsoft excel most valuable professional award recipient for the past four consecutive years I am based in London, United Kingdom, and on behalf of the planning committee and Liam Bastic, I want to welcome you to the 2023 Excel Virtually Global Conference. Now, this year's conference promises to be exciting like the previous conferences, and of course, this is going to be the third consecutive year that I'm going to be participating in this conference as a speaker. So the conference actually brings together Microsoft Most Valuable Professional Awards and experts from around the world who share their knowledge with the entire community. And of course, this is going to be an awesome conference and I'm going to encourage you to learn as much as possible from all these MVPs and the experts from around the world. Now, to participate in this conference, you can just come to this website and see all the information. Now, when you swipe to the program, you can see the list of presentation, the speakers, and the languages that the presentation will be delivered on. When you click on the speakers tab, you can see the array of speakers, most of whom are familiar faces across different Microsoft technologies. And of course, to participate, just come to the access and then you need to register. Now, this is a free to attend event. However, you can make some financial commitment, which will be channeled towards helping the less privileged. I'm going to come back to the program tab. For me, I'm going to be delivering another topic on building data warehouse, lake house, and SQL endpoints in the new Microsoft Fabric technology. Now, the Microsoft Fabric is a new deal in the Microsoft technologies because it's a very powerful end-to-end -end analytic solution with full service capabilities that allows us to move data from, for instance, the on-premise to the cloud to also inject data into what's called data lakes, perform data engineering, data integration, data science, and real-time analytics. Now, you can create a simple Microsoft Fabric account to be able to try all the platforms within the Fabric technology. Now, we have the Power BI as one of the technology or platform in the Microsoft Fabric. Power BI, just like you know, allows us to find insight, track progress, and make decisions faster using rich and compelling visualizations. Next, we have the Data Factory platform, which allows us to solve complex data integration and ETL scenarios with cloud scale data movement and data transformation services using things like Power Query Online and of course Pipeline. Next we have the Synapse Data Engineering that allows us to create a lake house and of course we can use Apache Spark to transform and prepare organizational data to share with different business units. Next, we have the data science, Synapse data science, which allows us to explore our data, build different kinds of machine learning models, and to inject the predictive insight into our analytics solution and applications. Next, we have the Synapse data 
warehouse, which allows us to scale up our insight by storing and analyzing data in a secure open data format, SQL warehouse with top performance at scale. And of course, the last platform is real-time analytics, and it allows us to inject, transform, and query our data sources and formats. Now, we're going to be looking at Data Factory and Synapse Data Engineering Platform, and of course, a little bit of Power BI. Now, once you've created the account, it's required that you need to sign in. So in my case, I have signed in, and of course, you can use the trial version, which is available to all users. Now, you're going to be in the Microsoft Fabric platform like this, and when you look at the bottom left of your screen, you can see this icon, Microsoft Fabric. When you click on that, you're going to see all the platforms that are listed here. So we have the Power BI, Data Factory, Engineering, and so on and so forth. The first thing we're going to do is to design and implement the STAR schema. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this databases and create a new database. And I'm going to call the database data warehouse. Okay. And then I click OK. So a new database is created. Now make sure this is selected in this drop down, the newly created database. And then we can create our dimension tables. Now I'm going to come to this notepad. I have all the dimension tables and the fact table already prepared. So it just makes sense of what we have here. Simple, we have the create table and then the name of the table. And then the table contains all these columns, customer key, first name, last name, birthday, and so on. And of course, we specify the corresponding data type, integer, envacar, date, and so on. And of course, we specify the not null. And of course, we use the private key, non clustered index constraints. The same thing applies to the DIM product. So I'm going to copy this first, Ctrl C, come back to the SSMS, make sure this is selected, Ctrl V to paste. I'm just going to click on Execute so we can see Command completed successfully. So let's just write a simple select start from, and then we can call the DIM customer, select the query, and click on Execute so we can see the structure of the table. It contains all the columns. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for the DIM product. So I'm going to copy this, Ctrl C, come back to the SSMS, Ctrl V, and then let's select the query and click on Execute. Again, we can check whether it was created. So let's come back here and now for the fact table, let's make sense. Of course, we provided the product key, the customer key with the appropriate data type, int data types, and then we specify the not null, and then we reference the product key in the DIM product dimension table, and we also reference the customer key in the DIM customer table, okay? And then these are all other columns that are associated with the fact table, the F transaction, the other dates, item number, units, sales, all true to freight. And of course, we specify data types and the not null constraints. And then we have the constraints in the primary key on the F transaction fact table. And then for the primary key, we also use the non clustered and then we provided the names of the columns, which are the primary key that we can use to connect to the dimension tables. So I'm going to copy these. Ctrl C and then we can come back to the SSMS and then Ctrl V to paste so we can go ahead and execute this query and we can see command completed successfully. Now let's just see the content. So let's start from F transaction table and then I can copy the query and click on execute. Now this is working pretty fine. So let's just click on refresh to refresh our SQL Server instance and then we can expand this table, the database, the data warehouse database, expand the tables and then let's see all the three tables so they were created. Nice, beautiful. Now in order to make it more easier 
to go through i'm going to click on new query and then we can continue here now what we want to do is very simple next before we inject data from the sales database from this dim product dim customer and the f transaction tables into the corresponding tables in the data warehouse database we need to create our diagram so we're going to create the star schema so right click on this database diagram new database diagram and then you can see this this database does not have one or more of the support objects required to use database diagramming do you wish to create them yes please click on that and then we can see the three tables the two dimension tables and the one fact table click on add and then it's going to be added into the diagram canvas so click on add and then we're going to add the third one and then we can close this add table dialog box so you can see that we've created the star schema in the diagram canvas and of course just like you know we have the primary key and the primary key and of course we can see the f transaction in the table so these are the foreign keys so let's go ahead and ingest let's come back here or let's create a new query now just like i've said we actually want to perform an etl within the sql server instance by transferring or injecting the data in the dim customer dim product and f transaction table in the sales database into the corresponding tables in the data warehouse database now to do that i'm just going to come here because i've prepared the whole thing down in order to split this up now let's see what we're trying to do here let me just scroll down now you can see we're just going to use the simple insert into data warehouse which is going to be the destination so the destination is data warehouse and then we'll specify the dbo database owner and the destination is the the customer table and then we provided the names of the columns and then we use of course you have to close this up and then we use the select now means to differentiate this customer key from the destination which is the database data warehouse okay so when you just check this section actually listed all the names of the same columns now you can see from now this is going to be the source sales data database dot database owner dot dim customer so i just use an alias c to represent the dim customer table in the sales data database so hence we have all the c's all right and then where not exist I just use this select one as a placeholder and then I select from data warehouse dot database owner dot dim customer table. Now I also use an alias DC to represent the dim customer table in the destination database, which is the data warehouse. So I now say where DC, in other words, the dim customer table in the data warehouse the dot customer key where this customer key is equal to the same customer key in the sales data dim customer table so i'm just going to copy all these i'm going to copy ctrl c and come to the same sql ssms and ctrl v okay so we can go ahead and click on execute so you can see one eight four eight four rows affected in other words eighteen thousand four eighty four rows were transferred from the dim customer table in the sales data database into the dim customer table in the data warehouse database that's lovely now let's just um, write a simple query and see what's going on so let me just scroll down and let's see click enter make sure you are in the data warehouse database that's very important so select star from and then we can call the name of the table dim customer table and then we can click on execute and of course we can see this is working pretty fine so we've been able to perform the ATA process within the SQL server instance level amazing now let's do the same thing for the dim product so I'm just going to scroll down and the same logic works i'm going to copy this and proceed come to the ssms now i can even click on the new query and let's 
paste here so that we can see what's going on and if we can see that our query is nicely formatted in order to guarantee easy understanding of the query and then we can go ahead and click on execute we can see 15 rows affected in other words 15 rows were transported or transferred so let's see all the content select star from the product and then we can grab the query and click on execute and that's it lovely now let's click on new query one more time and let's go to the same notepad and let's copy the data the fact table itself i'm going to copy all this ctrl c and i'm going to come here and paste so everything is working fine click on execute and then let's see so we can see 65,535 rows affected so let's see the content i can do simple select star from and then i can specify the f transaction table the fact table and then grab the query and click on execute so everything is working absolutely amazing now we've been able to complete the process in the ssms sql server management studio and of course we can just begin to query the data you know begin to get insight from all the records now let's switch back to microsoft fabric i'm going to come here i'm going to click on this microsoft fabric icon at the bottom left of the screen and then choose data warehouse now in the data warehouse we need to create first and foremost the workspace so i'm going to click on workspaces and then click on new workspace so let's just call it sql server data warehouse okay and then we can optionally provide the name for the description the domain and other things just go ahead and click on apply so the workspace is created and we are right now in the workspace in the data warehouse platform of microsoft fabric so i'm going to click on this new and then i can choose warehouse and then i can give name for the warehouse let's just call it my warehouse and then i can click ok so we can see we are right now in the my warehouse warehouse that we created and we can see the explorer we can see the warehouse and of course we can see the schema security and probably if i have any queries we're going to see all the queries in it now we can go ahead and click on get data and you can even use what's called create table with tsql you can even use the power query online to get data using the data flow gen 2. now we're going to use the data flow Gen 2 because this is really not working the way I expected it to work for now. So before we can be able to use the data flow Gen 2, it is important that we create or install the Power BI data gateway. Now to do that, I'm going to just come back to the Power BI platform and then I'm going to click on this gear icon, this icon here at the bottom, and then choose data gateway and that's going to prompt me to download the gateway to connect to on-premises data sources with power bi okay so just download this standard mode of course i have it downloaded so you can see this is going to be the file just double click to install onto your local laptop and then we can see on-premises data gateway installation so just go ahead and click on accept the terms of use and privacy statement and of course it's going to be installed to this directory so you can optionally click on this ellipsis to specify any directory you want but this is fine by me just go ahead and click on install and they're going to say click on yes so it's been installed on your premises data gateway so just wait for some few seconds like two minutes maximum and it's going to be installed all right so we can see on-premises data gateway we are almost done installation was successful so we need to provide the email address to use with this particular gateway that we just installed now we're going to use the same email that you know we used to sign in into the microsoft fabric okay so i'm going to come back to the same installation and i'm going to type in the same email uh, okay
So once you file, just go ahead and click on sign in. You can see you are signing as Abiola at ExcelJet Console Triple One dot on Microsoft.com and are ready to register the gateway so this is checked automatically register a new gateway on this computer so click on next and then we can specify the name for the gateway let's just call it i'm just going to call it my name All right and then we can specify the recovery key so i'm going to type in the password that i can easily remember so go ahead and reconfirm the password once you're happy go ahead and click on configure all right so you're going to see this on-premises data gateway and you can see the gateway abiola david is online and ready to be used and of course you can see the version as at august 2023 you can see different components like the logic apps azure analysis services where my power bi is registered my tenant is actually registered uk south so for the Power Apps, Power Automate, my tenant is also registered in the UK South. I can see the Power BI environment, the default environments. You just go ahead. You can even see other things like the service settings, diagnostics, network, connectors, and the recovery key. So click on close. So we are done with creating the gateway. So we can go ahead into the workspace and the warehouse that we created and then we can go ahead and click on get data and then let's use data flow gen 2 click on that all right so we can see we've got the data flow default table na name which is data flow one so i'm just going to call it um sql server okay and then click enter to commit to it has been renamed now let's get data or import from sql server you can click on this or click on this drop down and choose sql server databases in the get data connect to data source i can see the connector settings so just provide a name for the server now in the ssms the server name is usually located at the bottom of the object explorer the sql server instance so i'm going to come back here and type in the name of my server and then I can optionally provide the name of the particular database that I want to connect to. So in this case, it's going to be called data warehouse, just like we have it in the SSMS. Okay, data warehouse, fine. So we can say for the connection credentials, we've actually set up the gateway, so which is fine. Just go ahead and click on next. You can see get data, choose data. So these are all the three, three tables within the data warehouse database so i'm going to check the dim customer so i can see the preview and i can check the dim product and the f transaction facts table and then once you are happy go ahead and click create all right so we can see the three queries loaded into the power query online which is the data flow gen 2 and that's pretty much fine so if there's probably any need for transformation we can go ahead but let's just you know check the dim customer dim product now i'm going to scroll to the right i'm going to uncheck or right click on this column and choose remove columns so because we probably do not need this the f transaction again so i'm going to come to the dim product and scroll to the right and do the same thing i'm going to right click and choose remove columns Now I'm going to come to the F transaction table, the query, and I'm going to scroll to the right. I'm going to get rid of this DIM customer and DIM product. Hold down the shift key and then I can right click and choose remove columns. So that's very much fine. So in the data destination, I'm going to click on this settings or gear icon so I can see the connect to data destination. Now the destination is the warehouse. So go ahead and click on next. Amazing. So we can so see choose destination target. So we actually want to dump it in a new table. So let's just go with this name. Now this is the name of our workspace. So click on this to expand. And we can see the name of the warehouse itself, my warehouse. So just click on it, select, and then go ahead and click on next. 
All right, so we can see the just the major settings, color mapping. Now everything is fine. You just go ahead and click on save settings. And there we are back. So we can go ahead and publish right now. Now I can publish later, but let's go ahead and just publish now. Okay, so we can see SQL Server data warehouse. So this is our workspace. And we can see all the name, the data flow, staging, lake house. And we can see the my warehouse. This is the data set defaults. And of course, my warehouse, this is the warehouse itself. Now, to switch back to the Power Query Online, we can click, you know, click on this SQL Server and we can see the type data flow gen 2 so whenever i see a data flow gen 2 it automatically tells you this is the gateway to open the data back in the power query online so we just have to wait for some few maybe seconds for the old data to be deployed into the my warehouse warehouse so let's just go ahead and click on this my warehouse all right so we can see the explorer just like we have in the standard SQL Server. And of course, we can see the schema, so I can expand. And for the database, the DBO, so I can expand. And for the tables, I can expand. Now, I'm actually still waiting for the three tables to be deployed, so it's still going on behind the scene. <clears throat> Amazing. So we can see the three tables, the DIM customer, the DIM product, and of course, we can see our facts table. So you can just click on new SQL query and let's see all the content of the fact table. So let's see what we do select star from F transaction. So you can see the name of the schema, the database owner, and of course the name of the table. You can go ahead and click on run and then we should see the content of the table. Amazing. So these are all the content we can see, the columns and all other attributes like the item number, units, and so on. So that's basically how we can build data warehouse by connecting to the data in the SQL Server on premises. In this second part of the presentation, I'm going to show you how to inject data into the leak house in Microsoft Fabric from SQL Server table. So let's dive in into that. I'm going to come to the SQL Server Management Studio. Under the Sales Data Database, I want to ingest the fact sales table content into the lake house. And then I'm going to write some queries to interact with the data set. So over back to the browser. Now we are back to the Microsoft Fabric platform. Now at the bottom left corner, I'm going to click on this Microsoft Fabric icon and choose Power BI Experience. Now, in the Power BI experience, we want to create workspace. So I'm going to click on workspaces and they want to choose new workspace. Now, for the name, I'm just going to call this one data from SQL. Now, we can give name, let's see, SQL server data set for analysis. And then we can choose the domain we want to assign it to we can even upload an image to this data from sql workspace i'm going to click on this advanced in this presentation now you can see we can assign users and group that we can create from our admin center and of course we have the license mode we have the pro version and we've got the trial version which i'm actually using and we have the premium per user and the premium capacity of course, we have the embedded fabric capacity. So I'm just going to go with the trial version and then I'm going to click on apply. Right now, we are within the data from SQL workspace that we just created, which you can access here. Now, I'm going to switch back to the data engineering platform of the Microsoft Fabric. So choose data engineering. And then we can see Synapse Data Engineering Home. This is the home page. Now I'm going to click on the Lake House. Before I do that, we can see other things, items like the notebook, 
spark job data pipeline import notebook and we can even use a sample so i'm going to choose the lake house which is actually in the preview just like the other items so choose the lake house so i'm just going to give a name i'm going to call it data the lake house name so click create All right, so we are within the lake house we just created. Now we can use different kind of platform to connect to our data sets. We can use the new data flow gen tool that we did in the first presentation. We can use new pipeline, open notebook, and even a new shortcut. Now let's go with the Power Query Online, the new data flow gen tool. And then we are in the Power Query Online, just like you know, we learned, you can see the data flow one, and of course you can import from Excel. Let's want to import from Excel, click on that. Now you can choose link, link to file or upload file. If you choose upload file, you can see the box to browse through the location of the file. You can browse and upload, that's it. But we want to actually go with the SQL, so click on import from SQL again. I'm going to type in the name of the server just like we did in the first presentation. Make sure it is typed in accurately. And I'm going to access the particular database, so which is sales data. Okay. All right. So we can see connection credentials. It was able to recognize the connection we used earlier, the one we set up using the data gateway, and which is lovely. We can optionally edit the connection if there's a need, but this is pretty fine. Click on next and we can access all the tables within the sales data database. That's lovely. So now let's point to the fact sales table and then we can see the content of the table, which is cool. Go ahead and click on create. Amazing. So we can see the data is now in the Power Query online, the Gen 2, which is lovely. Now, the data is actually clean. There is no need for transformation. But peradventure, there is a need to perform transformation. Just go ahead and use all the commands in the Home tab, transform, add, column, and so on. But let's just, I think this is fine. So price, price, data type. Now let's change these to date data type from date time data type. So I'm going to choose this date. And then we are ready to go. That's lovely. Now, what I'm going to do next is to go ahead and publish right now. Now, before I publish right now, I'm going to collapse this and collapse it one more time. Now, this is the aspect that I love so much about the Power Query Online. I can do a whole lot of things with this kind of diagram, which is quite beautiful. You can see the lake house icon. That's quite amazing. Now, when you click on this icon, the plus icon, you can see how we can manage the columns, how we can reduce rows, we can even sort and filter and so on. But let's put it back into the data preview. So click on this icon and this icon to expand. And that's it. Let's go ahead and publish into the lake house. Just publish now. That's going to publish the data into the lake house. So we're just going to wait for some few, maybe two minutes, depending on how voluminous the data is. And then we can interact with the data in the SQL endpoint and write some SQL queries. So the data is ready. So you can see the refreshed. So we can see the names of different in particulars, the data, and we can see the types. So let's go ahead. You're going to see this lake house icon. Let's go ahead and access the data within the lake house. Amazing. So we can see the fact sales table. We've been able to successfully ingest the data into the lake house. And of course, you can see successfully created SQL endpoint. That's lovely. So we can even expand and see all the columns. Now we can go ahead and interact with the data by writing in you know, SQL query. Now I'm going to come back to the data from SQL. So I'm going to choose this data, the SQL endpoint, and then I can click on new query to begin writing our query. So we can see the schema, the database owner, the table, and of course we can see the table itself, facts, sales table 
and then let's go ahead you can do so, so many things like you know creating new sql query new visual query even measures so let's interact and play and write some queries now let's want to see all the content we can use the select star from and then i can even grab the table and then i can paste it let me just make this to be from capital letter and then we can go ahead and run the query and that's lovely so this is the entire in records let's say we actually want to group the payment type you can see you have the payment type want to group by sales that is the total sales now what i'm going to do is let me just write that again so i'm going to say type select and then i'm going to call the payment type field payment type underscore type that's to be the way it is displayed here that's fine and then i'm going to put in a comma so i'm going to use the sum aggregate function so i'm going to aggregate the total column so total okay and i'm going to close the bracket so i'm going to give an alias i can call it total sales or whatever so let's just call it uh total sales total sales by products okay and of course we have to use because we are using the aggregate function here we have to use the group by but before the group by we need to specify the table where it's coming from so from fat sales table and then we can use the group by so we want to group by the payment type so i can type in or let's just copy what we have at the top here we can copy this payment type ctrl c let's make this to be a lowercase okay so i'm going to copy this query this table name and i can paste here and put in the semicolon now let's grab this query and run or execute and lovely so we can see we have three payment types the paypal credits debits cards and google pay so these are the total sales for each of the payment type so this is basically how we can ingest data into a lake house from SQL Server. So we have learned how we can create a data warehouse, how we can ingest data from SQL into the data warehouse, and how we can even set up the lake house. So this is all about my presentation. Thank you so much for watching. I want to wish you all the best. Bye.